Good morning, 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 everybody. Happy Monday. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of y'all who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms and share words with you. Whenever God gives me a word to share, I come on and I share it with you. Really quick today, I want to talk to y'all from the topic of planting, like planting, right? Farmers, uh, crops, planting, yeah. So let's talk about this thing. When a farmer decides that he is ready to plant seed, right? He plants the seed and he does all this other little special stuff that he does and he fertilizes and he waits, but he does everything that he knows how to do, right? And then once he does everything that he knows how to do, he waits for the crop to come up, right? Well, here's the thing. There are no guarantees just because he planted the seed, right? Just because he fertilized, right? Just because he did everything that history and science has told him is effective in producing a harvest, right? That he's looking for. Even though he's done everything that he knows how to do, even though he's watered, even though he's planted, even though he's fertilized, even though he's done all these different things, guess what? There's still a possibility that he won't get a harvest. Why? Because even though he has planted seed, even though he has fertilized, even though he has done all the techniques that the industry tells him that he should do, right, for optimum growth, even though he does all these things, some things remain out of his control. Let's talk about that. So if God decides that he is going to send a drought, right, and this farmer has planted his seeds and God sends a drought, after he's planted his seeds, right? Well, guess what? He can uh, have fertilized, milk grow, fish guts, all kinds of dung and animal feces. He can do everything that he knows to do, water. He can do everything that he knows how to do, right? But guess what? If God decides that he's going to send a drought, guess what's going to happen? It doesn't matter how much he did. It doesn't matter how much he did with his own free will and by his power, right? Guess what? If God decides there's going to be a drought, his harvest will not come forth. If God decides that he is going to send a flood in that zone, right? After this, har after this farmer has put his seed down, guess what? He will not have a harvest. Why? Because of things outside of his control. What am I trying to say? When the farmer plants the seeds, he can do everything that he knows how to do, but nothing is guaranteed. Why? Because the farmer does not have control over everything. He only has control over what he can do. He only has control over planting the seeds. He only has control over picking the quality of the seeds. He only has control over picking where he wants to plant the seeds. He only has control over what he can do like fertilizing and miracle grow and fish guts and all that stuff that they do. He's got control over all that, but he does not have control over the earth. God does. And so he can do everything that he knows how to do. And he still will not be successful because he does not have control over everything. The Bible says that you would know a child of God by his fruit. You will know a child of God, not because they wear a WWJD, what would Jesus do hat? Not because they go around and call everybody saints. Not because they go around and just say, praise the Lord. And hey, saint, praise them, saint. Okay, that is not enough to know a child of God because it's, it's demons out there that can do the same thing to hoodwink people who don't have the spirit of discernment, right? No. How do you know a child of God? You know a child of God by their fruit. But here's the deal. Sometimes God will give us vision. Sometimes God will give us ideas, right? And we can tell, right? We can't, we can't see the future, but just by the idea that God has given us just by the seed, we can look at it and say, God, this has the potential to really be something. This really has the potential to be something. And so oftentimes God will give us vision. He will give us dreams. He will give us seeds, right? And he will also give us stipulations. You know what we're supposed to be doing. We know right from wrong. We know we're not supposed to be doing crooked things. We know we're not supposed to be taking out fraudulent loans in order to do, in order to help facilitate the growth of this vision and dream that God has given us. But what will happen is when God gives us a vision, when he gives us a seed, when he gives us a dream, when he gives us a desire, 
What sometimes happens is we as children of God will say, now listen, God done gave me the idea. He done gave me the blueprint. Now, I know I can get one of these loans and I can pocket some of that money. It's income tax time. Look, I can get extra money. I can pocket this money. I can do all these things, right? I can just take the blueprint that God gave me, but I don't have to do everything that God has told me to do. Here's the problem with that is that when God gives us a blueprint, when he gives us vision, when he gives us a dream, and he also tells us the right way to do things and the wrong way to do things, he also gives us stipulation when he does that, right? And we sometimes will think that we can actually just take the blueprint, take the seed, and then have the dream come forth without God. Here's the problem. Just like the farmer puts the seed in the ground, just like he fertilizes, just like he can do everything that he knows how to do, right? And he still is unsuccessful. Why? Because he doesn't have control over everything. So it is with the visions and the dreams and the seeds that God gives us. He wants us to be fruitful. He says that you will know his children by their fruit, right? And so obviously with, by him saying that he wants us to be fruitful, he wants us to bring forth, he wants us to multiply, he wants us to bring forth dreams and visions and everything that he, he has given us. But here's the thing. We need not be deceived that we can do it on our own. Just because God gave us the vision and the blueprint and the dream and the seed, right? We can plant it in the ground. We can do everything that we know how to do just like the farmer. But we are not God and we don't have control of the earth. And so because we don't have control of the earth, it is not us planting. It is not our planting. It is not our fertilizing. It is not our watering the plant that will guarantee its success. It is actually the favor in the hand of God that will guarantee our success. Let me give you a scripture. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Go down to the sixth verse and it reads, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. When God gives you vision, when God gives you dreams, when God gives you seed, as Miles Monroe would call it, the raw material. And when God gives you these things, right? Sometimes the enemy will creep in and have us think that we don't need God, that we don't have to do it the way that God said. Listen, we can just do it. Just take the seed, take the blueprint, look, take the master plan, and then you go do it your way and it is going to succeed. Not so. It is not the one who plants. It is not the one who waters, but it is God who will make it grow. Don't ever feel like when God gives you vision that you can make it without God because there is nothing so great that you or any other man can do. In fact, it is the favor and the hand of God that will make it come to pass. It is the favor and the hand of God that will make the seed grow. It is the favor and the hand of God that will bring harvest, not by your might, not by your power, but by the spirit of the Lord. I love you. I'm Grace Amber. Happy Monday. I will be right back on tomorrow with another word.